from St. Louis, Missouri, and uh, Los Angeles, California. It's the holiday Hollywood beatdown with the reigning UFC welterweight champion of the world, Tyron Woodley. How you doing, Tyron? Oh, where's my sweater at? Oh, man, where's your ugly sweater? I lost my sweater. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, we got a lot to talk to you about today. Uh, let's start with Fired Up. All right, everyone's talking about the big UFC fight coming up uh, December 29th. John Jones returns to the octagon. He's fighting Alexander Gustafson. But John Jones is already looking past Gustafson. He's been talking a lot of trash to Daniel Cormier. He wants a third fight with Cormier. Uh, he's been saying that Cormier is the fake champ champ. He doesn't deserve the belt he's been wearing. You're in this world. You live in this world. You know these guys. It, it, what, what is the deal with John Jones? Does he deserve a third fight with Daniel Cormier? You know, I think John Jones beat him twice, so it's kind of hard to say he doesn't deserve it. It's really up to Daniel Cormier if he wants to drop down to 205, or if they go to heavyweight, it sounds like John said they're going to have to pay him a nice pretty penny to do so. He beat him. I mean, he beat him yeah. convincingly both times, so it's kind of it's kind of tough for a person that had never really actually lost a world title to actually watch somebody else with a belt, and they're claiming they're the champion. But on the other note, it's not Daniel Cormier's fault on whatever kept John Jones out of the octagon. So Daniel Cormier got presented an opportunity to fight for a world title. He won the fight. So he is the world So would you, if you were Daniel Cormier, would you give John Jones a third shot or no? I would give John Jones a third shot just because it's just having that lingering over your head that he beat you. Like, yeah. you know, like you fight 10, 15 times, he might be able to pull off one or two of those things. So I, I know DC personally, he's a very – strong competitor he, he hates the thought of losing can he beat john jones realistically a f can a 40 year old daniel uh, cormier beat a john jones right now I, I think i think just the style matchup is a little difficult for him you know he's usually able to to employ his wrestling game and his grind i mean he's known for being the king of the grind getting up close underhook uh put his head the top of his head underneath your chin just grind you out the only thing about john jones getting that close to him come at a come at a cost come at a consequence you get that close to john you're looking at knees, elbows, uppercuts, and um, DC is one of the few guys that shit said, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go ahead and go in there and get it in." All right, now onto the segment the Tyrant named himself. It's called On the Real, though. On the Real, uh, TV Sports broke a huge story this week. Uh, Monte Nicholson, he's a safety for the Washington Redskins, and he got involved in a street fight around 2 o'clock in the morning uh, in Virginia outside of a bar. The story is that these uh, two other people were honking at him, and then he got out, and they ended up getting into a street fight. You see this one guy, he's trying to restrain Monte, but Monte's 6'2", 215, and shoves that guy off of him. And then he goes after this guy in a jean jacket punches him multiple times, and then ultimately puts him out with that straight left. You're a fight expert. What do you think? So I don't know what this guy did, but if we were breaking down technique, my guy has been in the boxing gym. Because that straight left, he turned his hips over, <laughs> that mug came out ever so straightly, landed clean, and he brought it back to his yeah. chin. I don't know. That I'm not. I'm not advocating violence. I'm not advocating. But as a straight defense, break by fight. break, if the tail of the but, tape here. But as a straight break <laughs> by break, motherfucker threw that straight left like he knew what he was doing. <laughs> <laughs> so this guy, if this guy, if this guy, uh, for some reason they ban him from the NFL and they don't let him play in the NFL again, his career is over. You think honestly, this guy should start yeah. transitioning and trying to figure yeah, out how yeah. to be a competitive fighter, yes. pro fighter? Yes. Just think of Eric Anders. Eric Anders was a linebacker. Yeah, he was on right. Hidden piece. That same explosiveness that you have when you blast somebody, knock their fucking helmet off. That's the same thing you need to throw a straight left as we saw. And he already knocked somebody out. We saw it. It's not like we have to guess. Hey, get his information from me. <laughs> All right, let's do a segment called Tyrant in the News. And there's been a lot of talk about you, who you're going to fight next. There's been all these names that have come up, the Diaz brothers, uh, Kamara Usman, all these people. What's going on with you? When are we going to see you back in the octagon? How are you feeling? Hey, everybody want a piece of the king. You know, when you're at the top, everybody want to bite. You know, the thing the thing about it is my motto is they think they want some, but they don't really want none. Who do you want to give it to? I wonder what Kobe has, to be honest, because Kobe, they didn't built this dude up. They allowed him to annoy the universe, talking this <laughs> terrible shit. He's garbage. I think he's just way more to sell this fight. And if they're not going to allow me to fight a guy like Connor going up a weight class, I've never been allowed to go up a weight class and fight for a title. I've asked to do it a million times. Bisming, they let GSP come in and fight him. So if those fights aren't on the table, I think that I'm going to end up fighting Usman anyway. So let me fight Kobe first. Let me get this bag right. right quick. Let me whoop his ass because I don't want somebody else in the interim to get the chance to beat him. I'm not pressed on fighting Nick Diaz or GSP or nobody else. Like, I'm that guy right now, and they want to fight me. So um, I'm going to just sit up here and just keep beating ass. 
All right, it's time for that part of the show where Tyron gets to punch somebody in the face and pat somebody else in the back. Tyron, who you like this week? You know what? I'm going to punch the person in the face that stole my wallet. Who would steal Tyron Woodley's wallet? It was my gift to myself <laughs> last year, so I'm kind of <laughs> bummed about the wallet. It was a little bit of money in there. But I want to punch that whoever got my wallet in the face because it's Christmas, the holiday. Normally, I'd have been mad. I would want to look at the cameras and see who's right. swiping my shit. Whoever needed that money, God bless them because Christmas... It's too stressful, man. We stress ourselves out, spending all this money on gifts. Now you can't pay your rent True. the next month. Your car no late. It's dumb. Like, how about you tell somebody you appreciate them, you love them. I appreciate you this Christmas. I appreciate you too, my man. I appreciate you. It's been yeah. a great year. Next 2019, we're going to tear it down. And I appreciate you. I appreciate the ability to speak on the TMG platform with a great co-host. Oh, that was, yeah, that was t- I'm emotional it. right now. Thank you, Tyron. I appreciate oh. you too, man. You're great. Honestly, you're 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 you're, you're a great fighter. You're a great friend. You're a great professional. We all love you here. And here's to a to a great 2019, man. Tell the people what to do. Hey, if you guys are on YouTube, make sure you subscribe to TMZ Sport. More Hollywood be down. Other bomb at TMZ shows. If you're on Facebook, pull up. Slide on over to YouTube. Go ahead and hit that subscribe. Boom, boom. TMZ Sport. All right, man. We'll see you next year.